issues we've had is, is and apologies to anyone in this sector, is mainstream media uh, and, and you know, how it's reported. So, yeah, you know, we've heard for quite some time that, you know, certain financial institutions are getting involved, and that may mean that they've ran, you know, a very minuscule test using Ripple or using some other blockchain to do, you know, cash settlements, and they've then given themselves a good old pat on the back and done job done, but it's made a headline because it's, you know, a top-tier, you know, investment bank. So, uh, and that's great for someone to put in a paper but it's not actually really that substantial. Um, I think we've also got to be very aware and conscious of the fact that it's bucking the status quo, right? You know, a lot, a lot of blockchain technology and how it can be applied, and it, it definitely, in, if we look at the traditional financial markets model, something like settlements, um, you know, this is a, a, a big change to an organization where, you know, a lot of people uh, could essentially be out of a job. Uh, you know, you were talking about really cutting down in, in, due to efficiencies through middle office and back office functions, um, which, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, no one likes change, you know, and people always like to push back against change. Um, and, uh, you know, from, from, from the exchange side, um, a lot of these more traditional firms realize that, that their lunches are going to get eaten. And, uh, and they, they, you know, that's, there is an element of self-preservation going on there as well. And, uh yeah, like internet started with the, like the first killer applications of the internet, and the, the, the project among that was the protocol apps, actually the protocol projects, right? And I think we are more or less on the same same stage, maybe further a bit uh, with the blockchain, actually. So I don't see uh, at this point I don't see any killer application in the, like consumer space, to be honest. But uh, I think in in I don't know one, two years, we'll see those protocol projects that will lead the uh, further evolution of the blockchain. Anyone else? I think that we shouldn't mix uh, the technology, the blockchain with cryptocurrencies. I think we will see mass adoption of uh, blockchain first, and when we see the mass adoption of blockchain, then the cryptocurrencies will follow, or digital currencies. Because first we have to have the infrastructure level of adoption that actually work and there, there is still time ahead of us. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, just checking, Alex, how long we have uh, on the clock. Ten minutes? I right, said so time for my question. I'll just add a point to where you guys said in terms of, um, in terms of adoption. Um, I understand the frustration of some people because you said you were in the, the space for, what, five years, right? Um, Five years is, seems to be a long time for a lot of people. For some, it's been nine years with the first adopters of Bitcoin. And I think you're spot on when you said, essentially, you know, there's this, in, it's like the internet, right? It took a while. In my opinion, this technology will be mainstream the day we stop talking about it because it's the new normal. Just like when the internet came out, everyone was very excited about the internet. Do you have an internet application? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I have an internet, etc. Everyone was very, very excited. It's whether you are internet-based or you're not, and then the mobile thing and so on. And the dot-com boom happened. The dot-com burst happened. Um, everyone was disappointed. This will never work. It was a terrible mistake. Um, I mean, as far as I checked last time, everything's on the internet as of 2018, everything. So it just grew back discreetly, but it just became normal. People stopped getting so excited about it. My gut feel is blockchain is following the same path. If you look at you know, its growth curve and so on, it's just following that very typical innovation path. And it'll take a little while, and people don't realize how early we are in that space. But the good news, though, is for all the people that feel like they missed out on this stuff, they haven't. It's just the beginning. So you can build apps, you can change the world, etc. Yeah. And, and there is also a problem with that. Like people tend to think, like, okay, how do we build an Uber on blockchain, or how do we build an Airbnb on blockchain? Right? So I, I think it's a wrong way to think about it. We, we just haven't figured out yet the user application, the, the application for real people, which will be possible on blockchain and will be possible uh, like in, in, a, in a new way. It's just the same as like there was no Uber or Airbnb before the internet. That's very true. I like that. That means we're going to see a new type, a new breed of application potential in the future. It's exciting. Um, next question, sir. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Quick question for Vitaly. I'm a customer of your exchange, and just uh, wanted to find out if there's any plans for expansion in terms of offering more crypto um, currencies available for trading. So. Uh, yeah, we, we, we currently have eight different coins on, on the exchange, and uh, uh, we've been approached 
hundreds of times with different uh, ICO coins in order to list them. Uh, for the last year, we've been very careful. We haven't listed any ICO tokens and, and we said publicly that we won't. We might reconsider it later this year, maybe like in six, eight months at least. But for the nearest uh, six, eight months, we are not listing anything new. And uh, we are kind of rebuilding the infrastructure at this point. So in order to deliver a better customer experience, and then we'll think about uh, adding new coins. Yep, gentlemen over there, um, Lou. There you go. I think that'll be the last question because we're on five minutes, aren't we? Five. All right. So, yeah, it's the last Thank question. Thank you. My name is, is Bizola, and I'm with Marketopedia. And my question to all of you in the panel focuses on talent acquisition. So, in your experience, what's kind of the skill level with the people that kind of come into you for employment? Is there a skill shortage in cryptocurrency? Is that going to kind of hamper the growth of the space? Is it a bottleneck? I'd really like to get your opinions on that. Thank you. All right, now take this one. Yeah, happily, happily jump in. Um, I think uh, a, a really interesting space to always look at is LinkedIn. Um, and, I, and I say that with a bit of a wry smile. The number of uh, blockchain experts which seem to have uh, appeared on uh, LinkedIn <laughs> is pretty staggering. And I'd love to see some, some statistics behind that. Um, th there is a, a huge element of kind of cutting between the wheat and the chaff. Um, you know, we, we have to be very aware that you've got always two sides to every business and that's the business and, the, and then the kind of the product and, and the dev side especially when you're in a tech or a fintech firm um, i think there are a lot of very good developers out there there's probably a lot which have good product like python developers etc um, maybe even some which have blockchain but having that and then some commercial experience out there i think is a rarity um, you know uh, I think someone once described to me saying, you know, a good Python developer, de de developer with, you know, at least a couple of years commercial blockchain experience is pretty much like finding rocking horse shit. You know, it really is that that rare. Um, we, we found that, you know, gro growing the firm organically is is probably the best way to do it. And you know, it is it is tough, but there are people out there, and as you know, the uh, the community grows, and uh, you know, more more and more are, are coming through. Um, from a business side, it, it's kind of it's interesting. Um, just a, a quick look at it at BlockX um, because we have quite a broad horizontal, and that we we're trying to pit, position ourselves as this bridge between old world capital markets and the new. Uh, we have p people that we've hired from the old world, so like our head of capital markets, I think is 30, 40 years bond experience. You know, have traded. You know, head of trading at Nomura and Mizuho um, before coming over to us, and then we have. Other guys like one of our founders and our, our CIO, Alex Novak, who's kind of been a bit of a veteran from the crypto space. So it's uh, quite, a, quite an interesting uh, and eclectic mix. Anyone else uh, about your experience on hiring in the blockchain space and maybe yeah. difficulties around that? How do you overcome them? So we are, okay. we are actually in a fortunate position because our R&D office uh, is in Ukraine and you can have a very good technical talent on a decent cost there. Uh, uh, regarding business, I, like I totally agree here, uh, you, you, you need actually to mix uh, the uh, kind of the old school people and the new school people uh, because there is not much difference in, in dealing, let's say, with traditional financial institution. We as a kind of fiat friendly exchange, we need to deal with, with banks and payment service providers on a daily basis. and uh, like. You can actually find people on the market that, that are from not from the crypto or blockchain related industries and the procedures and processes are more or less the same. As for like specifics in crypto, there are people on the market and like I've been bombarded I think like just as you are with the crypto experts, ICO advisors. You, you, you need to be careful with that because there are a lot of you know, useless people. Experts for free markets. Yeah. Yeah, the gurus, right? Yeah, gurus, experts, advisors. Right, good. Um, Alex, you got two minutes. Can we maybe do a, a last um, sort of so last few words as to maybe um, let's touch on the main topic. So, do you think in 2018 businesses who do not 
explore the blockchain question, so to speak, will fall behind, or is it essentially a lot of hype, right? Because that's pretty much what the question implies. Maybe starting with you, um, Norbert, and then we'll walk our way back to it. I think that uh, there are three levels of uh, blockchain uh, application. There is the infrastructure level, uh, like Ethereum or, uh, or Bitcoin or EOS uh, or Stellar. And there is the, the, that's the level minus two. Now there is level minus one, the infrastructure minus one, which will allow the uh, regular businesses to adapt blockchain in their unique use cases. Uh, that's what we are trying to do in Trust. And there is uh, level zero uh, with all the D apps and the uh, unique applications of blockchain. And I think that now we are on the level minus two slash minus one. We are not on the zero level right now. Great news. Now, uh, Cass? I mean, you, you say this a lot. Um, we are literally at this point in time at day one, minute one of blockchain. There's a huge amount that's going to happen. There's a huge, huge amount that's going to change. Uh, to say, whether a business will fail if they do or do not consider blockchain is, is kind of blasé, but fundamentally the answer is yes, because if businesses need to innovate to survive. So if this technology does make sense for you, whether that's from the kind of like the fact that you can like easily kind of like streamline certain processes or the fact that there is the incentivization layer, then yet consider you need to consider it and you need to look at what everyone else is doing within the market to make yourself safe. I mean fundamentally it would be naive for any of us to assume that the big incumbents like Facebook, which was brought up, Apple, Google, all of that are not working on some level of blockchain technology because there is definitely useful applications for them in their businesses. So if they can turn around and implement it in a way which is going to give them a horrific strategic advantage, an unfair advantage because of the capital they hold already, then, you know, as a small startup, you know, while you're leaner and you're quicker to act, you will still struggle. So the consideration of blockchain technology needs to be there, but equally, the consideration of any new technology in an innovative business needs to be there as well. So. Good news, Paolo. Agree. The, the key word here is considering. So you have to consider this in your company because this can reduce your cost and you can innovate and you can have more profit, you can create more jobs. So it's really like a life change for, can be for, for your company. Uh, however, the time is now because for you to develop a blockchain takes like years. It's not easy. As the question, like to find developers is not easy. Maybe Stefan can say for the Ethereum uh, network, how many developers work? I believe it was 10,000. Um, yeah, it's pro approximately, yeah. but no one really knows. It's yeah. very few and they come in very high salaries and that can be a, a bit of a sticker shock for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. So the time for you consider is now and then you make a revaluation and see if, if it's for you. I would actually kind of disagree on, on that about the timing. Uh, I don't think that the, the